Hello everyone, this hour on Verbling, the next in my Hot Topic series. This is part two of a two-part class on the future of travel. And in this hour, we're going to read an interesting article from the Guardian newspaper that outlines some of the possibilities for future travel, some of the amazing things that are predicted. We're going to hear their opinions and we're going to give our opinions too, all coming up in just a moment. First, a little bit about me. I'm John Eric, your verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, hanging out in Lisbon, Portugal to bring you this class. By the way, here are three quick rules to help you participate. Don't forget to turn off, tune in, and open up. That means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom nice and quiet. Tune in to the new words you're learning when you are speaking so that I can correct you and give you feedback. And finally, open up to your classmates. Relax and have fun. We're all here to learn, and this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. And in today's class, you can see this little graphic when you open up the uh, material. I'll give you the link once again in the chat window if you don't have it. This here, I'm going to copy and paste the link with the title too, so you can see it. Boom, there it is. The future of travel in the Verbling chat window. And if for any reason you can't get it, I will also post it inside right now in the group chat. All right, so now everyone's got it. All right. So we got some good vocabulary in the last hour. What we're going to do, if you go down to the table of contents, you can see text to reading. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six short sections of, of an article. Now, if we have enough people in the class, we could all pick one section and kind of summarize it. If it's just a few, then we'll just read it uh, ourselves. Uh, let's see. Right now, it's three people. So maybe we should start reading right away. So I'm going to go forward to whatever page that is. I don't know. Hold on a second. Let me jump forward to here. We go. Looks like we're on page. Looks like we're on page nine. Why is this thing popping up? Give me a second. Can we get rid of this banner? What is this? Oh, what is this? Sorry, I've got some weird banner floating around, which I can't get rid of. Well, I can't get rid of it. I don't know why it's doing that. View. So for some reason, it's taking over my screen. I don't know why. Uh, auto hide status bar, is that it? Hide status bar. Well, that's not it. Minimize rhythm. There we go. OK. And we've got some pretty pictures, too. That's always a good thing. Um, so why don't we get started? Since we only have a few people, we could all have plenty of chances to read. What do you think, <laughs> based on the picture, what do you think our very first destination, a holiday destination, is going to be? What, what do you think, Daniel? What do you see there? Uh, about the picture? Sorry? Sorry, my microphone uh, not connected. Yeah, that first picture, exactly. Is it a uh, hotel room under the water? What makes you say that? It could be the, the real next new destination for, for tourism. More more real than uh, space travel, I think. More so, you think it's more realistic than space travel? More realistic, travel. yes. More realistic. Well, let's find out about it, Daniel. So, um, give me a second here. I guess we're actually we were actually going to start on the next page. 
So let's start off, Daniel, why don't you start reading this first section, Hotel Room of the Future. Oops, sorry about that. Because before that, it's just a general description. It's what I was saying in the beginning. So let's go here, starting on page 10, Hotel Room of the Future. Okay. Start off reading? Yeah, why don't you start? We'll, we'll, we'll go around. We'll each take, take a section. Okay. Uh, hotel Room of the Future. They say, within 10 years, travelers will have no need to encounter a single human being from the moment they check in. Instead, hotel rooms will be transformed into digital, hyper-interactive space in which even the pillows will be embedded with electronics to massage your neck and wake you up in the morning. Well, the walls will display high definition image of your friends and family. Hologram personal trainers will hang out with you and the shower will use sound technology to agitate dirt from your body. Interesting. Using a traffic light system to indicate when you're clean enough to get out. We say thanks shower, but we're doing just fine when it comes to washing ourselves. As for the pro prospect of photographs of our friends and family writing down at us from the walls, surely this will only serve to hammer home just how isolated one feels trapped in a computer dominated DT limbo with a better looking than your hologram making your you feel insecure about those profiterol profiterol shaped bulks around your wet line. Meanwhile it's only been one night and your partner has already realized they can get better pillow talk from the well pillow. Never <laughs> <laughs> you've never felt so alone. <laughs> In a nutshell? In a nutshell? Yeah. What's ah, the, what's the bottom nutshell. line? In a nutshell. Ah. Computer says you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> so in the, the nutshell of Hotel of the Future is that the computer says you're dirty and you feel terrible. <laughs> I just want you to look again at the words I underlined. The first word was hyper-interactive. See it, Daniel? The first word in green? Hyper in interactive. Good. Second word? Images. Images. That's it. So here's what you're doing. If you're in these group classes, the best way to learn when you're being corrected is to keep a document open and just copy and paste the correction into the document and review it after class. Keep a record. So if I were you, I would copy and paste this this text and I would label it I put a little label on it you know pronunciation <clears throat> something dumb. like that dumb yeah that's what I would do so you can review it after class and if you review it once or twice it'll probably be there I mean it, for this kind of stuff it's probably not so difficult okay and three more words the first one is glaring glaring the next is isolated Ah, isolated. That's it. Isolated. Not E, but I. I isolated. I, isolated. And the last word is probably because you weren't sure of the meaning. It's bulges. Bulges. Bulges means a protrusion, something that sticks out. Bulge. Bulge. In other words, you're out of shape. You're probably out of shape. You're fat. You're bulging, right? You're not. You're not perfect looking like the computer. <laughs> what do you think about the hotel of the future, <laughs> Daniel? To sound good or <clears throat> not so good? For me, it don't sound good. I <laughs> I prefer pure nature and to to listening to the bird singing. Well, you you'll get digital birds. 
You get you get birds. You get digital birds. I don't know. I I don't like what I'm reading. <laughs> it's too much, uh, too much sci-fi. I would I would be so happy if this were true. Go to a hotel, don't have to see people. Be great. <laughs> also, I'd like a, I'd like a, a, a I'd like a fitness trainer, a personal fitness trainer. That would be really good. Yeah. Because because reading reading a fitness book, I mean that's one thing. On online, you usually have to pay if you want to have a really good video. So having a personalized digital fitness trainer, that seems like a really good idea to me. I Herb like that idea. Herbling is a good example. Yeah, but Herbling doesn't do fitness. See, that's <laughs> the problem. It's fitness for your brain. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this class, but <laughs> maybe oh, others. Yes. Maybe. Um, okay, let's all take a section of this. So Daniel, you did Hotels of the Future. Space travel. Shadow, you're next on my list. Want to handle space travel? Okay. I have to start, I guess. I'm going to have to start on the next page. I guess it starts on 12, actually. Uh, from here, they say? Yes. Okay. They say for the ultimate and the serious traveler bragging not right. How about a brief time spent floating uh, weightlessly uh, in low Wait. earth? Weightlessly? Weightlessly uh -huh. in low earth orbit? It's something that should become rel uh, relatively avoidable. Um, I don't know what IE. IE is, in Portuguese, it's istue, <laughs> which comes from Latin, which means this is. It means, in other words, in mm. other words. So when you read it, you can say IE, or you can say, in other words, or you could say, that is. You could say any of those things, or you could just say IE. I mean, that's what the word is. Okay. By the way, Sylvia, you studied Latin. What does uh, what is IE in Latin? Uh, it's for example. Yeah, but what's the actual Latin words? What uh, are the actual words? I, I don't know. You studied Latin for all those years and you don't remember? I really? spent five years uh, in the high school. Ten yeah. years ago. So? Yeah, and Caesar doesn't write the IE. No? Oh, no. Okay. Sister Rome, about battle and soldiers, but yeah, i.e., <laughs> we killed a lot of soldiers. I.e., there was a big battle. <laughs> but anyway, in Portuguese, this is each way. So I guess in Latin, it's the same basic thing. I don't, uh, I don't know. Quest way in Italian, I don't know. Um, okay, so you could just say i.e. seventy-five thousand. Okay, i.e. $75,000 compared to the cost of, say, an actual Apollo-style excursion to the moon. That said, ar architect, poster, plus partners are cur currently involved in a project with the European Space Agency exploring way they could build structures on the moon with the help of 3D uh, printers. So a lunar, a lunar, lunar, uh, a lunar hotel could be on the horizon. On the horizon. Horizon. Mm -hmm. We say it's bad enough having to listen to someone recounting the time they befriended the local harm. Harem. Heron band salesman during their sorry salesman during their gap year in India. Let gap year look. gap year is when you before university you t you go on Eurorail you take a year off and you travel around Europe on trains hanging out with all the other students. That's your gap year. 
for example, traveling around when you're a kid? Okay. Uh, gap year in India, let alone the time they ex accidentally sneeze in their own face while ex uh, <clears throat> experiencing. Experiencing. Experiencing zero gravity, a moon colony. However, does bike you? Pick. Pick you? Pick. Pick? Just pick? Just pick. Pick or peek. One or the other. Pick or peek. I say pick, but it could be pick or peek. Just, does, like, the, just like the word choose, to pick. Okay. Does pick our interest in a natural uh, get saving? Why do you think the nutshell is get saving? I don't know. Because it's $75,000. Do you have... Maybe you do have $75,000. I don't have it. That's about what I owe. <laughs> when you graduate university in America, you typically leave with a debt of fifty to $70,000 in the United States. Everyone's in debt. Mm. So what do you think? What do you think about the, uh, about the possibility of weightless? Oh, oh well, let, let's do the pronunciation first. Weightlessly. Weightlessly. Huh? Wait, just like I'm waiting in line. Wait. Weightlessly. Okay. That's it. Excursion. Um, what's the meaning, teacher? This? Of which? Which? Excursion. Excursion is trip, trip or travel. Okay, excursion. Excursion. J j. Excursion. Good. And then lunar. Lunar. Lunar is anything related to the moon. Lunar light is moonlight. Lunar hotel is a moon hotel. Horizon. Horizon. Right. And then the last two. Experiencing. Experiencing. And finally, pick our interest. Pick our interest. There you go. Pick means to pick is like stimulate or you or to, 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 to notice to jump out at you, to pick, to grab you. So it, it grabs our interest, it gra catches our attention to pick our interest. I say pick, but I guess some people say peak. I guess we have to really look it up. I always say pick, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, the point here is what do you think about low Earth orbit, uh, weightless um, holiday time? <laughs> Would you do it? It looks nice. Do you think it's affordable? No. Not so affordable. No, it's not. In a nutshell, get saving. Okay, we'll come back to these in just a minute. Let's see if we can all read one, get them all in. Uh, so in the first half of class. Underwater experiences. So Sylvia, you're next on my list, and then Yuki, and then Andri, and we've got three more sections, so it's perfect. Tell us about underwater experiences, Sylvia. We've got to start there, actually, on page 13. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello, Sylvia. Hello, hello? What's happening? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, my connection. Uh, underwater experience. Underwater the poison underwater resort in Fiji, pictured, will become more mainstream in the future, but it'll cost you photo scan sky scanner. They say subaquatic hotels will be a far more mainstream pro pro uh, proposition by 2024, and underwater tourism will certainly trump space travel. As Sky Scanner CEO Garrett Williams says, I saw from here to sit down there than in space. 
that said the poison underwater resort in Fiji, which was due to open in 2008, is still nowhere near ready. We say it might not cost, but sleeping with the fishes is still going to be behind the budget of 19% of holidaymakers. When it does finally open, a week at the poison resort in Fiji will cost nine thousand a dollar. In a nutshell, don't hold your breath. Pounds. Don't hold your breath. The nutshell is don't hold your breath because Sylvia, why do you think they say that? Uh, because you can stay a week or more underwater. So don't hold your breath <laughs> because you'll be underwater for a week. Yes. Could be, could be. Okay, very good. It could also be don't hold your breath because it might never happen, right? Because they've been waiting since 2008. So it's kind of a joke. Um, just a few vocabulary words, uh, pronunciation words. Subaquatic. Uh, subaquatic. Yes, yeah, sub. Sub was the keyword because you think you said soup. sub. Hotels. Yes. Second syllable. Stress on the second syllable. Hotels. 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 No, you're you're hotels. saying you're saying hotels. I'm saying hotels. Hotels. Is that the same? Hotels. No, Hotels. Mm. Eh, more or less. <laughs> Hotels. Okay. Try it like this. Hotels. You almost have to go a, almost like a huh rather than a full ho. Hotels. 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 Eh, it's okay. It's okay. Next word is proposition. Uh, proposition. Preposition. Proposition. Proposition. Pra. Proposition. Yes. Remember, I have an American accent, so I say pra. Maybe a British accent would say pro, o, but I say pra because that's the American way. The short vowel of o is a. Ah. Proposition. Also, this is very, very, very important. Gareth William says. Says. Right. It looks says. like say. But it's not say. When it's in the third person, it's pronounced as if it has an e in it. Says. 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 So that's really important because that's a very common word. The next word is not so common. Poseidon, the Greek and Poseidon. Roman god. Poseidon. Poseidon. The next word was beyond. 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 But I'm hearing behind from you. Beyond. Beyond. There we go. Very good. And finally. Beyond. Finally. There we go. Because I think you said finally instead of finally. 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 Okay. So if you're keeping track, if you're keeping track, just add these to a list of pronunciation words. Like I said, I suggest you open a Google Doc, okay. copy and paste, and after class, review them. And because you heard me say them, they'll be easy to remember. Um, another thing you can do, download the video from the class. It's very easy to download YouTube videos. Cut out the part of the class you don't want. Just keep the, the two minutes where I was reading, and then you can read and listen at the same time. Uh, just mm -hmm. uh, You can uh, download the video, change it to an MP3, or you can download it as an MP3. You know, Cut out most of the class, because you only want to focus on uh, this text. And then just listen and repeat on your iPad, or your iPhone, or your MP3 player, or whatever. So just a little trick that might help. All right. Mm -hmm. So, Yuki, we're going to talk about local travel. Okay. And Lo we're going to start. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Local travel. Hmm. Couple, couple alive. Couple alive in their Airbnb. Airbnb. 
Airbnb apartment, but peer-to-peer -peer holiday rentals are just uh, beginning. Uh, they say peer-to-peer -peer collaboration will take over the world, and within the next decade, between five five to ten percent of people could do renting out their homes to travelers. Increasingly, social travel from acc accommodation to supper clubs and other experiences will become part of the traditional travel industry. New tools will lead to collaboration between tourists and people in the destinations, helping create, create more localized and personal travel. We say, as personal, authentic experiences go mainstream. Wait, wait, look at that. Look at what we have here, Yuki. Hmm? It's your favorite expression. As far as X ah. goes, we have it right here. Look, as <laughs> far as experiences go, you see, I did make it up. It's a true thing. As far as I want, what I want <laughs> to say about exactly. Wars. So now you can see uh, this. This okay. is the Guardian newspaper. It's real. Oh, it's real. Mm -hmm. uh, as a personal, uh, authentic experiences go mainstream. What next for the current set of supper clubbing, Air, Airbnb, Global to Trotters? I don't know. Globe Trotters. Globe Globetrotters. Globetrotters. <laughs> Globetrotters who like to think of themselves as the travelers, not tourists. The only way they will be able to dis distance themselves from the tra traveling masses, mas masculine in on their territory, is to drop the idea of social travel altogether. And instead, adapt on anti-social approach. The countryside will will be awash with hipsters being hipsters, yeah, hipsters being mindful, alone in the woods. In a nutshell, forget secret supper clubs, ex expect secret holidays. Why? Why do you think we should expect secret holidays? Is that clear? Uh, Maybe it's hard to follow this one. This one's a little bit confusing. Why hold the secret crowds? So I, first, we have I, to be clear about. I think it is uh, quite uh, cool for 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 people living in the big city, young people. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, spending uh, spending uh, time with with their friends uh, in secret clubs in the weekend with their f guides maybe <laughs> maybe drinking alcohol and taking drugs <laughs> dancing it doesn't say anything about that <laughs> <laughs> yes um, that was the that was the nineties. Prancing. That was the eighties and nineties. That was the rave scene. They're not talking Enjoying about that. Trans. Yeah. Here they're talking about peer to peer travel. Here they're talking about peer to peer. Do you know what that is? Peer to peer travel. Yes, I know. Peer to peer is uh, mm, uh, it, uh, it it a computer uh, term. Right. Uh, but I think here, here it means uh, uh, connected to, to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so connected to each other and not connected to a corporation. Uh, yes. So individually. Right. Uh, and connected to, to each other. Uh, so, so I think uh, personal communication. No. <laughs> I no, know. not communication. It's it's really travel agencies that are not with companies. Mm -hmm. These exist. The most famous one that I know of, besides Airbnb, B and B is Bed and Breakfast. They shorten it to B and B. 
-hmm. So be Airbnb is not that cheap. The cheapest and most famous one that I know is Couchsurfing.com because you can literally stay with someone for free anywhere in the world on Couchsurfing. I mean, it's 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 not even a problem as long as you can offer them something. Usually, a couch at your house, you can easily travel and stay there. Usually for a couple of days. Has anyone ever tried couch surfing? No. <laughs> I actually I'm follow uh, I'm subscriber of that uh, website. Oh, you should find me. I'm there too. Look me up. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'll try. I, I, I haven't I haven't used it. I was going to use it uh, when I when I went back because I had some job interviews and I was going to do couch surfing. I didn't actually use it yet, but I, I I made an account there and I looked into it. And it's good because a couple of years ago, you in America, you just had Craigslist. Craigslist was full of all kinds of crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> couch surfing is full of crazy people, but you they have to authenticate their their profile. So at least you know they're real because you can't it's not that easy to fake your profile you have to pay a little bit of money but it's a good idea and so literally you could travel stay with a stranger and all you have to do is be able to host them at some later time where you live couchsurfing.com uh, it's okay it's good for the kiddies at least I don't know maybe <laughs> when you get to be 40 and over, it's a little weird. I don't know. <laughs> Hard to say. Um, you know what a Globetrotter is before we leave this one? Globetrotter? I don't know. Trot is like what a horse does. A horse trots down the path. Clip, clop, clip, clop. So a Globetrotter who is, is someone who is comfortable traveling all over the globe and has lots of experience doing uh. it. So a world traveler is a globe trotter. Ah, there right? is a, uh, I I know the I, I know there is a, a cable channel uh, about travel. Uh, yeah. Called uh, globe traveler. So. Called globe trotter or globe traveler. Globe trotter. Yes, globe globe tra Globe trotter. Globe trotter. So maybe yes, yes, I know. Mm -hmm. There was a famous basketball team called the Harlem Globetrotters who don't ah. actually play basketball. They just travel around the world pretending to play basketball. It's a comedy, yeah? Maybe. It's a comedy act, yes, right. Yes, I know. <laughs> it's so athletic, athletic comedy, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> they travel all over the world and they always play the exact same team. I forget the name of their opponents. They're always playing the same team. But yes, it's a comedy act. Uh, did we run out of... Oh, no, we still have extreme travel. Okay. By the way, I forgot to say hello to Muhammad because you came in and we were already reading, so let me just say a quick hello to Muhammad. How are you, Muhammad? Hello, teacher. I'm fine. How are you? I'm very good. Where are you from, Muhammad? Saudi Arabia. From Saudi Arabia. Are you in Saudi Arabia in that picture? Because it looks very cold. No, it's uh, Switzerland. Oh, because <laughs> I didn't know that there was snow in Saudi Arabia, so you're yes, not in Saudi exactly. Arabia. Ah, yes. okay, very good. Um, let's see. So Yuki was reading. Andre, you're next on my list for extreme travel. And then, Mohammed, you can read the very last one uh, after that. And then we'll talk about this. So, Andre, can you pick it up on page 15 for us? Okay, let me click the link. Yeah, or you can just read off the screen, whatever is best. Okay, extreme. Extreme, extreme traffic, yeah. Uh, tourism to North Korea is already increasing in popularity mm -hmm. and extreme tourism is set to grow. What you that, that 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 was written before Kim Jong Un disappeared, <laughs> so maybe I don't know if, if it's going to get more popular or less popular. We'll see what ha see if he returns. If you've been reading the news, he disappeared. Okay, go ahead, Andre. 
Uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, maybe uh, you wanted to say Muhammad. Huh? Uh, you wanted Me to say Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> they say in the further pursuit of bragging rights, to rest will start for forcing. Pursuing, pursuing, pursuing adventures in extreme destinations. Travelers will not want to be the first to drop in on so-called forbidden zones. Destinations once rin rendered, rendered inaccessible by conflict or political instability or conversely be among the last people to see habitat or species 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 threatened with extinction. Lebanon will become the new Dubai Angola could take off too, and the chance to spot a pair faced tam tamarind, Tam tamarind, right? tamarind before the species dies out it will, will be a lifetime holiday highlight for a lucky few. So that's what they say, the people who are promoting this kind of future travel. Let's see what The Guardian, the newspaper is The Guardian. Let's see what The Guardian says. So it says, we say, Mohammed, we say. We say, firstly, anyone who goes on holiday for bragging rights is an I idiot. I do idiot, idiot as for <laughs> anyone idiot. who go Anyone as who's going... Sorry, anyone who's going to be doing it for bragging is just an idiot. That's what The Guardian says. That's a pretty strong opinion. <laughs> yes. As for traveling to forbidden zones, fine if you have got, if you have got genuine interest. But even then, let the story of Matthew Miller, the American who, the American who wanted to Secretly investigate the human rights situation in North Korea, persons, and is now experiencing them at first hand. Be cautionary. Cautionary tale. In national, don't do it. <laughs> in a nutshell means in conclusion. In a nutshell. To conclude, in don't do it. In a nutshell, that's right. So that American, Matthew Miller, who decided he wanted to investigate, hey, what are the prisons like in North Korea? And now he is experiencing them firsthand. Where is he, Mohammed? Where is Matthew where is where is Matthew Miller now? According to the text, mm -hmm. where is he? Now? Yeah. Is he at home having a nice warm jacuzzi bath? No. No, no in North Korea. He's in North Korea. He's in prison. <laughs> so they're trying to say the next time you want to go to some place that's forbidden, you might end up. Yeah. As a, as part of you might end up a statistic yourself, yeah. you know. One hundred percent of the Americans who wanted to see what the prisons were like in North Korea ended up in prison. You'll be part of the statistics. Uh, let's look at pronunciation. The first word in fifteen that I underlined was pursuing. Repeat. Me? Yes, yes, yes. We're doing pronunciation. Pursuing. Uh, pursuing. Good. The next word was rendered. 
rendered. The next word was inaccessible. Inaccessible. Very good. The next was species. Species. Very good. The last one on 15 was genuine. Genuine. Good. And on the next page, just one word, cautionary. Cautionary. Very good. Cautionary. Um, uh, so I want to give Andrea a chance to read two, and then we'll talk about all of these at once at the very end, the last 20 minutes or so. So Andrea, let's pick it up on page 16, five things we'd like to see in 2024. Uh, okay, uh, you, you're going to start down here with airships. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> airships, the return of... Airships, the return of. Airship, the return of ever since the uh, Hindenburg disaster. The idea of traveling beneath a huge balloon. Balloon. Ba uh, balloon. The, uh, a huge balloon of highly, <coughs> highly in inflammable gas has perhaps understandably been on the back burner, but now they 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 are back in development, safe, environmentally friendly, and with the potential to stay in the air for weeks at a time. Dirigible. Dare it's like this. Dirigible. Dirigible. Good. Dirigible transportation seems seem to us uh, like the clo closest will come to living in the clouds. clouds. There you go, in the clouds, right. Yeah. So, remember the Hindenburg, the thing that burned over New Jersey in like 1930-something? Remember that? Uh, yes, it, it's uh, a part of history. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a very bad idea. Because oxygen is one of those things in the universe that creates fire. <laughs> so if you're going to mix two gases together, make sure one of them is not oxygen. Uh, so yes, the Hindenburg burned dramatically uh, in New Jersey. But I guess, I guess they're on a comeback now. Uh, uh, airships, dirigibles. Well, we see them all the time at football games. They always float over the football game, and they often have cameras on them as well to get good views. Daniel, transatlantic trains. Uh, transatlantic trains. London, King's Cross to the New York Grand Central without changing trains. Someone needs to start digging that tunnel. That tunnel. Tunnel. That channel. So, are they going to happen? According Just to this text, are they going to happen? Uh, yes or no? Are they going to happen? Uh, I don't know. Well, according to the text, someone needs to start digging that tunnel. What does that mean? What's he trying to say? It it uh, it it not exists um, the tunnel. He notices the tunnel, or he wants there to be a tunnel. I'm confused. <laughs> Someone needs to start digging that tunnel. It's a joke. He's making a joke. I don't uh -huh. know if it's a he or she, by the way. I don't know who wrote it, but the person who wrote it is making a joke. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> is it going to happen in the future? Probably no. not. Yeah, no. probably no. not. He's making a joke. Hey, someone get out there and start digging so we can make this a reality. Okay. So that that's the joke. Uh, Shadow, virtual reality. Virtual reality destination testing. Mm -hmm. You want me to read it, teacher? Uh, unless you don't want to, sure. <laughs> okay. In the future, holidays from hell... Holidays from hell should mm -hmm. become inconceivable. 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 
one way of ensuring this is through virtual reality destination system simply pop on an oculus 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 rift headed headset and go for a stroll mount in the hotel room building work in the pool then go somewhere else or sort out the problem before you go never again show unsuspecting holiday makers be faced with such imperfection and on arrival so what's an oculus rift is that clear what it is no it's a virtual reality headset a virtual reality so it's a big helmet you put on your head and you are virtually in a place where you want to be like stepping into the internet kind of yeah I, I saw it in movie <laughs> but they're real they're, 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 they're a project that's being developed it's a real thing so they use them all the time but they're not really commercially available at least I don't think so like Google Glass, the people use them, some people use them, but they cost a lot of money still. So you can go to your destination and see it for yourself before you go. Good idea, mm -hmm. bad idea? I like it. You like it. Okay, good idea. <laughs> Multilingual brain implants. Oh, this is a perfect one. Sylvia, what do you think? Multilingual brain implants. Oh, we lost Sylvia. Ah, I'm here. Oh, you're I was there. Okay. Close the microphone. Uh, so, multilingual brain implants are some new technology uh, inside your brain, so you can learn new language and speak a lot of language. Mm -hmm. Are Are you reading, or you t or did you read it already? Yeah. So you're summarizing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I just read. No, you can summarize. It's okay. So one more time. What are they? Because I didn't. I didn't catch it all. So what? What are they exactly? They are okay. They are a new invention. Mm -hmm. uh, that the, they. It's a new technology. They implant in your brain. These. Uh, some, sometimes there are a um, chemist reaction or something like this inside the brain. Mm -hmm. So you can speak more than one language and uh, understand uh, 1,000 different languages in all the world. And do you have one of these, Sylvia? I really want one of these. Do they exist? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is, if you can get a hearing aid, why can't you get a language aid? The new hearing aids plug directly into your brain. Uh, they have um, a little wire that goes behind your ear. Well, what they do is they, they I guess they plug into your inner ear, not your brain. But those, those ocular, uh, cochlear implants, and they work very well. The problem is, the ear is a very simple thing. You know, it's not complicated. Everything else, like eyes and other systems, are really complicated. So probably not going to happen. Okay, Yuki, last one. Insta holes brain zaps. What is that? <laughs> Insta holes brain zaps. Probably using the using the same technology of multilingual brain implants. In the future, you won't you won't even need to go on holiday to get that refreshed and relaxed feeling. Instead, just zap yourself with a ho holy dot, and to be and it's, to oh, be. Oh, it's instead of a holiday, you get a holla rod. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny, holy rod, and to be transformed transport it to you, to your destination of choice two minutes two min two minutes later you'll be back in the office 
this time with the with the brain brain full of wonderful memories, such as a such as a de, delicious cocktail delicious cocktails you you drank in that underwater hot hotel, and how clean you feel from the intelligent show, shower you had that morning. Mega bragging right instead. Uh, indeed. Mega bragging right indeed. Exactly. Oh, I prefer this one. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> and and so, even and uh, would be able even have have a headache. Because uh, of I, holiday. I think I think if you if you're able to experience an entire holiday in two minutes, they probably have the technology to get rid of your headaches. Probably. Could probably do everything. So which one of these future travel plans do you have? I'd like to hear from you. Which of these would you like to go on? Do you have any plans? For me, I don't know about the intelligence shower. I like I like the uh the train from uh what was it? From uh, Paris to New York? What was it? I can't from remember. From London to New York. London to New York. I like that. I like that a lot. You Here's can the go, you can go from Paris to London by train. You you can. Yes, yes. you can. I don't think it, I don't know how fast it is. One hour. Uh -huh. One hour and a half. Well, I was one one time I took a TGV from the south of France to Paris and they said, "Oh, this is a high-speed bullet train." And it still took like six hours. <laughs> so I didn't understand how that's high speed. It took forever. Sorry, teacher. You take the wrong train. Probably, yeah, probably. Would uh, Would you prefer to uh, to to go under ocean or above ocean? I think I I I think it's going to be more dangerous to go under the ocean, but it'll be a faster trip. So. At least you personally won't have as much. I mean, the problem with like the subway in New York is that it goes under the Hudson River when it goes to New Jersey. I cannot get on the subway to go to New Jersey. I can't do it. I just my brain will not allow me to get on the thing because <laughs> I can't tell you how many times halfway it, it takes like 40 minutes to, uh, on that New Jersey subway halfway across the, the underneath the river the Hudson River where the plane crashed a couple of years ago the the, the the subway just stops the electricity goes out we're all sitting there in the dark it's nasty <laughs> and you stop and think there's like millions of metric tons of water above your head and if there was a if anything went wrong we'd all be drowned in about two minutes right so I don't know about that but if I could do it in 30 minutes, no, if I could go from New York to New Jersey in like, you know, 10 seconds, yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. That, that's my feeling. What do you think? I understand how you feel. I also don't like the situation when I don't know uh, at all uh, where I, I am now. <laughs> in the dark, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't see anything from you, from the wind. So, uh, and I am afraid of such a situation. May, mm, and I, you know, uh, in Japan there is a famous shinkansen, a blue, blue, uh, mm, blue train, yeah. Bullet trains, right? Yes. Uh, now, now government plan to create uh, already began began to create a new bullet train Shinkansen. Uh, it, it is used uh, a new magnet te technology is used. So a new train doesn't even doesn't doesn't touch to the rail. So it enable to it, it make the train to go very fast. Uh, I've heard its maximum speed of new train would be reach uh, 500 kilometer second, maybe 5 600. So you can you, you can go from Tokyo to Nagoya very very fast. Um, instead, uh, it it uh, train goes all the way under the ground. 
and ah. uh, and uh, and tunnel, through tunnel. So you can't see na nothing. <laughs> so so <laughs> if you long... if you go by a uh, conventional shinkansen, you can you can enjoy the view of Fujisan. Uh, Fujiyama uh, from from the from the window, but in new train you can see nothing. How long does it take? How long it would takes it take? quite a, quite quite short. Uh, 30, I had 40 minutes from Tokyo to Osaka. Mm -hmm. and, so, and normally, how long would it take? Normally, uh, two hours, two, two and hours. a half hours. Yes, two and a half hours. And then it's going to be reduced to about 40 minutes. Yes. Hmm. You, do you think it, it would be benefit? I uh, think, they, I think that uh, people living in Osaka can go to work, uh, to office uh, in Tokyo every day using a new bullet train. But what happens if there's an earthquake or a tsunami? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe they they are they are thinking about making taking measures uh, uh, for extra extra for emergency. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it would be helpful. Uh, but uh, uh, regarding a uh, conventional shinkansen, uh, there is there was no accident until now. Even even in the time of a big earthquake, so Japan maybe Japanese is good at to um, take major take um, take measure in advance. So so well, I think Japanese are good at taking measures in advance, except when it comes to nuclear reactors. Oh, you are very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I don't. Yes, yes. Uh, it, it is. Best, uh, yes. When, when it comes to trains. Oh <laughs> when I it comes to trains. I can say nothing. Yes, yes. It is disaster. Yes. Catastrophe. Yes. As I, long as you don't have a nuclear. I'm ashamed train. as a Japanese. Such a. Such well, oh God. look on the bright side. Now you can see your sh your sushi even in the dark. So <laughs> you got glow in the dark sushi. Uh, final thoughts about future travel, class. Final thoughts. No final thoughts, really. Mohammed, Sylvia, Shadow, nothing. Where we will go to the moon? The, what? Say again. The next summer we will go to the moon. You and me? Next no, no, summer. no. All of us. All yes. of us? Yuki, me, yes. you, Shano, all I'd of us. I'd love to go with you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that, Sylvia? Uh, because they are uh, trying to this new technology. Oh, it's only for finishing the lesson. Oh, okay, fine. I thought you I knew you something. Else. <laughs> it's a joke. I, I thought that maybe you had special knowledge of this. No. There, oh, you I, can I, invent <laughs> the mission. I heard that the Leaning Tower of Pisa is actually a rocket, and it's going to blast off, go, go to the moon next summer. Is that right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. Well... I'm afraid that I will probably have to pass on that because why? Eh, there's not much going on on the moon. What's there? <laughs> it's a lot of dirt. <laughs> eh, been there, done that. I don't know. How do we get the moon and beautiful women away to you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have that here. I don't need it there. Yeah? <laughs> uh, here meaning here in my house. Um, well, on that note, <laughs> uh, happy future travel. Um, don't forget what I said. Uh, keep, keep a little document open and try to copy and paste some of the corrections and review them after class. It's a good, simple, simple technique to, to review pronunciation and even vocabulary. Couldn't think of a simpler way to do it. Just open a text document and copy and paste. Of course, you can download 
the PDF that I gave you as well and just read it again. That could also help, whatever you want. I'll be back in an hour to do uh, the next conditional mystery. We have a one sentence conditional mystery this time, one sentence long. It couldn't be simpler. <laughs> so in our new conditional mysteries, uh, the condition will come later. So we're going to spend a lot of time making guesses and it's going to go a little bit faster. I've, I've, I've re revamped the rules a little bit to make it flow a little bit better. So we're going to try that if you want to stick around. Not next hour, but in an hour from now. Okay? If not, have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday morning. Bye for now, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you Bye for now.